That's 2650. 2650. Wheels up. Wheels up and locked. Let's hope he really is an ace. Bit dicey, wasn't it, sir? If that had been for real, Thompson, he would have been dead. And you too, Chatteris. What was that, sir? I said, if that had been for real, you would have been dead. practice force landing and scare them to death. But the drill, that was so, so sloppy, so complacent. If it had been for real, they'd be dead anyway. I want to take them on ops tonight, sir. Do you? With respect, sir, I've joined you to run B flight, and I'm determined to make it the best on the squadron. So with your permission, sir, I'd like to ginger them up a bit. And I want to make a start tonight, with courtesies, shower. Well, I don't spare up a good crews without good reason, Stanton. Curtis's crew is solid. They've been together a long time. I'd say stolid. Oh, come on, sir. It was you who persuaded me to join the Pathfinders in the first place. I was one of the first to pick up a batch of these birds. You said you needed men like me. And you do. You haven't got more than you bargained for. <laughs> you know, your conceit's disgusting, Stanton. I hope you can justify it. Remember this. Morale at Oakwood is pretty high. If you damage that, I'll have you posted. Well, I can see that Curtis's chaps are keen enough, sir. I just want to freshen them up a bit. You're starting at the wrong end of the squadron. Curtis's crew is of the best. He's been a good deputy flight commander, and he was hoping to be squadron leader. I did drop rank to get back on up, sir. If Curtis had made wing commander at the age of 23, his crew wouldn't be the shambles it is now. I think you're underestimating him. But to prove my point, you can take them on ops tonight. Thank you, sir. Flight Lieutenant Curtis, please. Yes, sir. His crew are one trip behind him. I shan't pull the wool over his eyes, sir. I shall tell him the truth. Flight Lieutenant Curtis for you, sir. Send him in. 
Now, come on in, Curtis. Scott Leader Stanton, Flight Lieutenant Curtis. How do you do? How do you do? Scott Leader Stanton has just joined us for a third tour. We're very lucky to have him with us. Oh, it's nice to be here, sir. You know you did a flight test with your crew this morning, just to get back the fuel of four engines? Yes, sir. Well, now I wanted to take your crew on tonight's operation. But they're on stand down, sir. Yes, I know that, Curtis. And I know you're a duty officer. But your crew are one trip behind you. Well, I don't mind doing the extra trip, sir. We have done 17 together. Well, they were pretty slack, I thought, this morning, Curtis. I just want to uh, freshen them up a bit. They'll be very unhappy about this, sir. And so am I. There's nothing to be unhappy about. They'll be in good hands with Stanton. He's got a big reputation, you know, one of the aces. <laughs> nice of you to say so, sir. Well, I'm not doubting Squadron Leader Stanton's competence, sir. Oh, no, I should think not. It's just that we started together and we want to finish together. We're a very good crew together, sir, and we don't want to lose that. No, I don't want you to, Curtis. Decision's irreversible, is it, sir? I'm afraid so. You can have them back later, old boy. Well, there's no mention of hay fever in your records, Thompson. Well, I haven't had it since I was a kid, Doc. I didn't think it was worth mentioning. No, it's like asthma. Touch of a guilty conscience. Oh. Anything bothering you? No, not really. Well, we're losing our skipper tonight. You know how it is. We've done 17 trips together. Uh, quite a moment. Okay, about that. How are the others taking it? Well, the same, Doc. Well, it seems pointless to break us up, even for one trip. I mean, we work together, none of this bloody ace business. Oh, who's taking over? Well, a real brill cream boy, I reckon, sir. <laughs> New squadron leader, Stanton. It's his third tour. He gave us a practice force landing this morning and scared us all to death. Oh. So now it's, um, hay fever. I'm not trying to get out of it, Doc. You were the one that caught me sneezing. Yeah, well, there is a pretty high pollen count at the moment. Of course, there isn't much of it above 200 feet. Okay, if you say so, Doc. Fine. Goodbye, Doc. It's not like Mac to spit up a crew. I get the feeling it's not his idea. Mm. You mean Stanton? Yeah, it's probably sent from group by some gutless penguin who thinks we're not up to scratch. Mm. And Stanton's the ginger man. He dropped rank, you know. Mm. Got a gong or two. Oh, yeah. I've seen enough of that rank dropping caper. A man makes a big splash of sewing on his squadron leader's stripes and then makes sure everyone knows he's a wing commander. Uh-uh. Oh. Hello, chaps. Who's in the chat? Um, I am, sir. Well, what'll it be? Uh, just shandy, please. Shandy? Well, I'm not flying tonight, Jack, so I'll have a dirty great pint. Uh, lemonade or ginger beer, sir? Ginger beer, please. <clears throat> Same again, then? Uh, no, thanks, old man. I think I'll stick. Pint of bitter and a ginger beer shandy, please. Well, are you chaps still clamming up on me? Treated me like a verbal leper this morning. Well, as a crew, we're not very talkative in the air. We like to concentrate on the job, you know. Thank you. Well, uh... Cheers, chaps. Here's to tomorrow morning. I've made the decision, Doc, and it's not to be questioned. You'll get the crews fit to fly, and I'll tell them who to fly with. Now, where are you going? Look, I'm sorry, Bruce, but I cannot pander to every whim and fancy. It's a question of aircrew morale. That is my territory, you know. Yes, I know. But in a way, Stanton's right. The crew's getting a rut. Oh, I know. I've done it myself. But it was all sense of urgency, even of danger. You need to shake them up from time to time. Well, don't you think they get shaken up enough on ops without distracting personnel problems? Miss Stanton? Oh. oh. He's got their backs up at the moment just because they're used to Curtis. But don't get me wrong, Curtis is all right. But we need some flair. And Stanton has flair. Oh. He's got a big reputation. I like him. And you've got to admit it, he's a natural leader. He's got bags of confidence. Now, that sort of thing is good for morale. Good or bad. Depends how he's used. We got a full petrol load. Could be one of the Italian targets. Yeah, perhaps that's why Stanton's so key. He'd be key to go to Berlin. Perhaps we are. Heaven forbid. What do you make of him, Chip? Stanton? No, I think he's a gone crazy ace. Not my type. No, nor mine either. Yeah, why do they have to break us up, Skip? Because we're too bloody good, mate. That's why. <laughs> now, just who is too good, Sergeant? 
Just a bit of speculation about you, sir. Nobody's too good for this business. Right, briefing. Let's go. Oh, just, just a moment. You're flying with me now, so uh, we'll do without the fancy dress. All right? Go on. Oh. Well, I'll see you later then, Curtis. Cheers, Skip. Right, Skip. See you later, chaps. For a man who's keen on going on ops, He's not too keen on getting in the kite, is he? Don't you believe it? Ground crew say he was nosing around in here all afternoon. sunlight this afternoon I couldn't see through the perspex of your turret. How do you expect to see fighters at night? Clean it. But I... Clean it! And stow that ladder. Bit up. Sir! Those guns of yours are positively cocooned in oily rags. They're not meant to be preserved for posterity. They're meant to be used tonight. Do something about it. Yes, sir. You may need those, Bishop. Stow them away before they roll into the general litter at the bottom of this shambles you call an aeroplane. Amongst the newly identified flak positions mentioned by the intelligence officer at briefing, which you have failed to mark on your chart, is one there. And that is right on course. Yes, sir. Thompson, sir. Put that in your toolbox before it gets in the works. Right. Before we start, bomb Emma. Yes, sir. Take some of that stale chewing gum off the forward hatch, or we'll all be stuck inside. And I don't have eyes that see round corners. But I did come out to this aeroplane this afternoon to see what sort of a shambles I was stuck with. And it is a shambles. So we'll have to compensate by an airmanship performance of absolute perfection from each of you. Right, pre-flight checks. Get to your stations. And Sergeant Short, don't let me catch you lying in the nose during takeoff. No, sir. Ignition. On. Contact. Contact. Who's pouring scotch oil on Peter's troubled water? He's hopping mad over Stanton. You're a right chip on your shoulder about fellows like Stanton, haven't you? You're making a personal issue of this, sir, when it's not. Well, I think I'll. Uh... I think it's your round. If you don't mind, sir, I am duty officer. Ah, you're perfectly available here. Come on, put them up. See little enough of you in the mess as it is. Well, I prefer to drink with the crew, mostly. And you spend a lot of time with them, don't you? That's not wrong, surely. In moderation. Cheers. Cheers. But too much. I think you tend to lose the respect. That's why there is such a division. An officer's mess, a sergeant's mess. A leader has to keep himself apart. Otherwise, he's just one of the lads. Well, different people lead in different ways. Unfortunately, you prefer Stanton's way. Course check, navigator. Steer one, six, four. All right, engineer, let's have George. Automatic pilot engaged, skipper. 
Enemy coast ahead. We're crossing in four minutes. What the hell is that supposed to mean, navigator? I just thought you might like to actually fly the aircraft yourself. I mean, well, the coastal flag and all that. You said four minutes. Can't be too careful. I'll fly this aircraft when it really has to be flown. All right, I have manual control. Oxygen. Oxygen on. Check course and position, navigator. Exactly. Yes, sir. Oh, I first saw Stanton at uh, Riverfield. He was taking a rest between tours. His idea of a rest was to sit at the other end of the barrels for a while on night fighters. <laughs> You'd think he'd seen enough of it after two main force tours. Exactly. I mean, most chaps are content to do one job well, but not Stanton. They were just beginning to have trouble with the airframes on the early buzzards. You remember they took some time to sort out the stressed skin construction? Well, a couple of them were just shattered in mid-air for no apparent reason, and... Uh, well, morale was pretty low as a result. And when Stanton arrived, he took the oldest kite they had, and he threw it around over the trees in the most dazzling display you've ever seen. And when he was coming into land, he chopped one engine, made a perfect touchdown on the other. Now, that's the kind of chap we all need. Give us a boost. short. It's not good for a bomb ever. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't mind betting your crew has been put through their paces tonight, Curtis. Are you suggesting they wouldn't be under my command, sir? If I was, you wouldn't be on this squadron, lad. Flying heavy bombers is the aerial version of trench warfare. And the real inspiration comes when a chap jumps up and leads his men over the top. Now, I suppose that's why I appreciate men like Stanton. You in position? In position, sir. I shall need a visual fix on the target, Bomb Emma. Thanks. No offense, navigator. Just making sure. This should be a piece of cake. Why don't we put the icing on it? Hello, skipper. Navigator here. Two minutes to target now. Target sighted. Illuminators are down. I can see the dockyard from here, skipper. Right, now let's get it right the next time. You are 90 seconds ahead of ETA, Navigator, and that's not good enough. Spot on, Skipper. Running up now, Bomb Aimer. Hold it on that, Skipper. Steady. Steady. Right. Steady. Flare's gone. Bomb's gone. Steady as we go. Camera turned over. Camera and the flash went off all right, Bomb Aimer. I think so, Skipper. We'll do another run. And this time, make sure I'm not going home without a picture of the aiming point. We better watch the fuel, Skipper. Well, watch the fuel. Something's burning, Skip. We'll have a look. Engineer. Tell him to 
Plug in someone! like this that's never try to blow a fire out but this seems like a very good moment to have a go now hang on Intolerable when he's in that frame of mind. Oh, what's he um what's he got against you? He's got nothing against me. He's found himself a new hero. A new VC, perhaps. Stanton? Yes. The man of the hour. Thanks. You know, Doc, I just don't understand it. The perfectly normal bloke. Perfectly good CO. Until someone throws him a piece of the upper crust. Posh accent, good pedigree, bit of superficial leadership training. No Max head turns as if he's just seen some really outstanding piece of fluff. <laughs> well, he's got a very good reputation, you know. Cramble, that's why. The SO, the FCN bar, squadron leader at 22. Yes, okay, okay. That's no reason for the lad to start treating his other men like second-class citizens. The way he was giving us all that bull in the bar about Stanton, you never think he was at Cramble too. Oh, he'll cool down in a day or two. It's just that he's impressed with what he calls Stanton's flair. Don't tell me. I'm sick of flair. Takes more than flair to get a lank in its crew on ops and back again in one piece. I'm alone. I'm alone in a Lancaster. Oh, to jump. Yes, go on, jump. No, no. wait a minute. It's about, it's about 700 miles. But it's 20,000 feet over those hours. In a flying wind tunnel. It's below freezing. Yes. I must jump. Let's go on, jump! No, no, hang on. Miss Thompson? Suppose Thompson saw that fire go out. Bloody good the way you got that fire out, Skipper. What made you go and jump just when you had it made? Couldn't play some music, eh? Bailed the whole crew out of a perfectly good aeroplane. Still, I won't hold it against you, Skipper. Not the way you chucked away 30,000 quid's worth of Lancaster. Just to save your reputation. No. 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 And as Curtis. 
Back home. Oh, God, what a triumph for him. You did what? You bailed the whole crew, my crew, out of a perfectly sound aeroplane? You should be court-martialed. Ace of the base. No. No. Go on. Jump, man. Jump! If you're going to stay in this bloody aeroplane stand, then you might as well fly it. But is it possible to fly it back in this condition? <laughs> you just tell me it's not possible, and I'll do it. Right. Now then, power. Four engines running. Temperature and pressures? Okay. Fuel state? That's dicey. I might have to ditch. Attitude, nose up. Cruising climb, trim. Fully trimmed, all right. Where am I going? Climbing turns to make height, then roughly northwest. Automatic pilot. Now listen, George. You just hold her in a steady climb while I get rid of some of that excess weight and close the turret door. useless navigator out of the way of a flight plan, right? God, what a shambles! No, I mustn't lose that old boy. Fastest way to seventh heaven. This was right for a change. Thank you, George. Now then, hold it steady on 317, George. I've got to lose a bit more weight. That fuel state's going to be critical. <laughs> I 
I better think it's cold down there. They should bloody try it up here. I shouldn't have shouted at you like that. I mean, after all, you're, well, you're not as good as Jim Stanton, are you? I, I, I go messing around with the centre of gravity and you, you haven't got the sense to create for it. Well, I, I suppose we must have lost a few pounds. What with the guns and the ammo? Yes. Yes, she even feels it. A bit lighter for that. Don't you bother, eh? You're looking a bit light in the head yourself, Stanton. I shall plug into main oxygen if I were you. That bottle will be running low. Thanks, Doc. Thanks a lot. Well, I just thought I'd let you know what's happening to you medically. You see, your metabolic rate is being attacked uh, from two sides. First, the very low temperature. I mean, it's well below freezing in here. And secondly, anoxia. At this altitude, you must have all the oxygen you need. Now, both these factors contribute to a very dangerous fantasy state. I know you're an ace, Stanton, but don't overestimate the extent to which you can control this aircraft. You'll be subject to delusions of competence and crises of confidence. Oh, don't worry about me, Doc. Well, I'm really enjoying this. They'll give me another go when I get back. Amazing feat of aviation skill, fearless courage, devotion to duty, fighting not only against the enemy, but against the very elements themselves. <laughs> very good. Well, I've only got just two more words of advice for you. Keep moving. That's to remove or uh, stop any chance of muscular atrophy. Uh, but don't overexert yourself. That's to prevent anoxic deterioration of the brain. Oh, and by the way, as I came in, I noticed you left the back door open. I'd shut it if I were you. It was quite a draft. Oh, thanks, Doc. Thanks a lot. Hey, Doc. Doc? Huh. Well, he's gone, George. See, that just goes to show you, doesn't it? It really sorts out the men from the boys, this kind of flying. There's not many that would stick it out and see it through, but Jim Stanton's one of them. <sighs> okay then, George. Over 20,000 feet. Cruising speed. Straight and level. Course, still 317. Fine, George, now look. You hold her there while I go and close that rear door. Yeah, not a bad idea, the Doc. Oxygen bottle.
Stanton is a court's martial. A well, what's the charge? Lack of moral fiber. L lack of moral fiber. I shall read the charge. The charge is that on the night of September the 23rd, 1943, you, squadron leader James Stanton, DSO, DFC, and Bar, did deliberately order your entire crew to bail out of a perfectly serviceable aeroplane in the knowledge that they would face certain incarceration in an enemy prisoner of war camp. And in the hope that you yourself would gain praise, promotion and reputation and decoration for the pseudo achievement of flying an empty aircraft single-handed under hazardous conditions. We were on fire! I had, I had no choice! It was a decision that had to be made! That made it to save life! Your lives! I shall call for statements from the crew, beginning with the flight engineer. Flight Sergeant Thompson? Sir? You will make your statement about the source of the alleged fire. On our third run up to the target, I smelled burning in the flight deck. I went back to investigate and found the source of the fire somewhere below the main spark. It was my opinion, sir, that the fire was caused by one or two marker flares which were dislodged during a previous reckless and unnecessary manoeuvre oh. and which had failed to drop from the bomb bay on release. Our third run over the target was made at far too low level and the barometric fuses of the flares caused them to ignite inside the aircraft. Well, how was I to know? Did you communicate your theory to the captain of the aircraft? There was no time, sir. We were ordered to jump. And you jumped? Yes, sir. Squadron leader Stanton had been at pains to convince us in the course of the day that he was not in the habit of having his orders questioned. <sighs> he knew best. He was an ace, sir. <sighs> Thank you, Thompson. Flying officer Chatteris. Sir? Previous witness mentioned unnecessary and reckless manoeuvre. Have you a statement to make about this? Yes, sir. <sighs> we had crossed the enemy coast when the captain began to take severe, evasive action from what he claimed was an enemy fighter. He executed a series of maneuvers which far exceeded the limitations of the airframe. I gained the impression that the primary purpose of this was to demonstrate to his crew his aviation prowess. What about the fighter? It was never sighted. What? Gunners, did you observe any enemy aircraft? No, sir. No, sir. They're lying, Curtis. Ah, uh, I mean, sir. They're lying. Well, they, they know perfectly well there was a, a night fighter. And, uh, you, Chatteris, you were impressed with the maneuvers. You said it was like rocking a baby. I did warn him about the danger of hang-up, sir. This, this is a farce, sir. They're just getting at me because I'm good. Because I came into their cosy little crew. Into your cosy little crew, Curtis. Curtis. Curtis, take off that fancy dress and get the hell out of here! All of you! All of you, get out! Abandon aircraft! Jump! What the hell was that? Breathe. Uh, uh, must. Uh, low. Breath. 
Oksijen. Mars. Oksijen. Doc, that was hell. And St. Telmo saved me. St. Telmo's far. Good old St. Telmo. Good old gremlins. Uh, according to the book, the corona discharge originating from an aircraft may result in a lightning discharge which may, temporarily, blind the pilot. Yes. Yes. Right. Okay, St. Elmo. You're on. As a patron saint to Jim Stanton. I could do with a bit of help up here. Right. Right, George. Down we go. Serious check on the state of the fuel. Oh, that's dicey, Stanton. That's dicey. Be ashamed to have to ditch an hour with only the coastal flak to deal with. Except Stanton, sir. That's right. Don't you run out on me now. Even the birds are against me. fuel. Or a bird in the carburetor intake. If it's a bird, it'll save fuel. If it's fuel, I'm in trouble. Back on course. Beehive mother, do you read? Beehive mother, do you read? Mother Beehive, receiving you, strength five. Repeat, strength five. Beehive mother, I am without crew. Permission to join. Without crew? Mother Beehive, you're clear to join. Runway two zero, wind two one zero, five knots. Beehive mother, turning finals now. Right. Undercut. Down. Green, 20 degrees of flap, turning onto 2-0. Full flap. All I need now is a carburetor full of... That's short. 120 knots. 115, 120. Oh, right. Keep her up. 120, 115, 110, 110.
lights off? Fuel off. Ground flight. To ground. Bloody good show, Jim Stanton. Bloody good show. There was a fire in the aircraft. It went out. I got them away safely, Peter.